Hello and welcome to part two where we uh, start right at the heart of the matter. Uh, I explained these kind of problems at the last time. So now your job is to try them out. Uh, if you don't know any, if you have no idea how to do this, then go back to part one and watch that last uh, minute or so where I discuss how to do these. So pause the video here, try them out, and write it down in your notes. So you tried them, and for the first one, you got negative 126 a square roots of a, and the second one, you should have gotten 120 x cubed uh, square root of 2. If you got those right, you're doing fantastic, and move on with your life into the next part. But right now, I'm going to explain these. So the first thing you want to do is, if you can simplify anything inside, simplify whatever you can inside. So for example... Uh, well, first I'm going to multiply negative 9 and 1 third, giving me negative 3. Secondly, I'm going to say, hey, wait a minute. I can break 28 down into the square root of 7 and the square root of 4 and the square root of a squared. From there, I also know with the, 63, the square root of 63a, I can break that down to the square root of 9 times the square root of 7 times the square root of a. So let's identify these perfect squares here. I have 4, and the square root of 4 is 2. The square root of a is, or a squared is just a, and the square root of 9 is 3. So the kind of stuff I'm left underneath the radical, so what the radicant would be left as, is 7 times 7, or 7 squared, a. But I know that the square root of 7 squared is just 7, so really... I have negative 3 times 2 times a times 3 times 7 times radical a. And if you multiply all those beautiful numbers up, you will get negative 126 a radical a. So let's look at the next one. Do all the erasing. And we move back to the next one. First, I multiply what's outside because that's just, you know, easy peasy. Uh, so 10 times 20 is, well, or 10 times 2 is 20. Uh, then here, I don't know. I could break down the 4, right? There's a 4 there. I could take radical 12 and break it down to radical 4 and radical 3, which would mean that I can break out that 2. So now I have 20 times 2 times 3x cubed times radical 6x cubed. And you'll see in a second why I didn't just take that x uh, squared, or the x cubed and break it down to x squared next. If I were to multiply these things together, I would get 40 square root 18x to the 6. And because that is an even power, I know for certain that that is going to be a perfect square. So I can break this down to 40 radical 9 times radical 2 times radical x to the 6. Square root of 9 is 3. So not 40 times 3. Right? Identify those perfect squares. Uh, the square root of x to the 6 is x to the 3rd. And then square root of 2 at the end. So that is 120 x cubed square roots of 2. So let's move on. Uh, we have the division property of square roots. We've had the multiplication, but we also have the division. Uh, the square a again cannot be; uh, it has to be greater than or equal to zero. If a were negative, then we're dealing with imaginary numbers, and we don't want to deal with that. And that's not actually just a horrible math joke. That's actually a real field of mathematics that you'll get into later on down the road in the high school. So good for you if you make it that far. You will, hopefully. Um, but I can break down radical a over b into radical a over radical b, or the square root of a over the square root of b. An example of that is if you were to put in your calculator and you'd put it in square root, and then it'd have the parentheses, and you'd put 36 divided by 9, that would be the same thing as 6 divided by 7, because I can take the square root of 36 and the square root of 49, and that'll give me the square root of 36 is 6, square root of 49 is 7. So when a radicant has a denominator that's a perfect squared, it's easy to apply this division uh, to simplify the numerator and denominator of the results. When it's not a perfect square, it may be easier to simplify the fraction first. So we're going to look at uh, both ways we might apply that. 
So for example, let's look at the square root of 8x cubed over 50x. Now here, that's the square root of the whole thing. I could break it down piece by piece, but that's going to be a pain uh, to deal with. So if I simplify what's inside first, I'm going to have a much easier time. Uh, for example, I can simplify this down into the square root of 4x squared over 25. Because these are have like bases I'm dividing, that means I subtract my power, so that's why it's x squared. And then 8 over 50 simplifies down to 4 over 25. If I want to simplify that down even further, I just take the square root of uh, 4x squared and the square root of 25. The square root of 4x squared would just be 2x, and the square root of 25 would be 5. And again, remember, an answer cannot be simplified, or an answer is not simplified until the denominator does not have any uh, doesn't have any radicals in the denominator, and our answer cannot be in fractions. We can't have fractions underneath our radicals. That means it can be simplified further. So let's try one more just to, to show you how it might go as well. Uh, I could also have square root of 25y cubed over z squared. Now here I'm not going to really, I can't really simplify anything down, but I can do the square root of 25y cubed over the square root of z squared. And the square root of 25 is 5. I can also take out a y there, and I'd be left with the square root of y. And then the square root of z squared is just z. So those are some examples of how we can apply that. But of course, of course, there are more ways. Uh, so you should also write this down even though it doesn't say it. But when a, radical, a radicant in the denominator is not a perfect square, you may need to rationalize the denominator to remove the radical. To do this, just multiply the numerator and denominator by the same radical expression. So let's look at what that might mean. If I had radical 3 over radical 7 and I needed to, I can't have that, right? There's this radical in the denominator that's not simplified not simplified. Um, so if I want to get rid of that, well, to get rid of it, all I have to do is multiply by that radical. So I have to multiply both the top and the bottom by radical 7. So because if I multiply both the top and the bottom by radical 7, it's the same thing as multiplying by 1. So that would be radical 21 over radical 49, or the square root of 21 over the square root of 49. And we know, can we simplify down the square root of 21 at all? Not at all, but the square root of 49 we can, and that would just be 7. We could also kind of know from right here in the beginning that uh, the square root of 7 times the square root of 7 would just be uh, 7, because it's really 7 to the half times 7 to the half, and because they have like bases, we would just add up those powers. So a half plus a half is 7 to the first. Uh, so let's look at one that may be a little bit more complicated, but, you know, not the most complicated. Um, and that would be radical 7 over radical 8, 9, or, well, 8n. So if I were to try to uh, get rid of that, the first thing I want to do is I want to simplify down my uh, denominator as much as I can. And I can't simplify down the numerator at all, but I know that, 8 is really square root of 4 times the square root of 2n. And then if I kept going, that would be the square root of 7 over 2 square roots of 2n. From there, all I have to do is uh, multiply both the top and the bottom by the square root of 2n. And that gives me the square root of 14n over 2 times 2n or the square root of 14n over 4n. And that would be it simplified down all the way. If you hadn't simplified that out, um, if you had just multiplied the top and the bottom by 8n, you'd still get the same answer, but it would take you a little bit longer to try to figure out. So let's have you try some. Try these two guys. Make sure to simplify if you can beforehand. Uh, pause the video here, and I'll reveal the answers afterwards. Okay, so we tried out the problems, and we should have realized that the first one would have been 
uh, 3 radical 10 over radical 5, which actually isn't simplified down. I'll have to simplify that down even further for you, so stay tuned for that. And the other one, which would be 4s, which I know you're thinking, wow, that's really simplified for a complicated answer. Um, if you were to have simplified this down even further, you should have gotten that it would have been, what would it have been? Well, let's solve out the problem. I can simplify this down. Oh, that's just completely wrong. I don't know what that is. That's garbage. Um, but I know that both the top and the bottom are divisible by 3. So I would make this 3 radical 2 over radical 5. Okay, because both 6 and 15 are divisible by 3. From there, I would multiply the top by 5 and the bottom by 5. And then that would be 3 radical 10 over 5, which is, I think, what I meant for the answer to be. Uh, the next one, let's try out. Again, and simplify anything in the radical if you can ahead of time. So, for example, this square root of 7s divided by the square root of 28 uh, s cubed. I'm going to leave that 8 alone. I don't have to deal with anything with that, right? We can't simplify things that are in the radical and not in the radical. They have to all be underneath the radical. But uh, that simplifies down to just 4s squared, radical 4s squared, because uh, 7 divided, or 7 28 is really just 1 fourth, but I'm not going to write times the square root of 1 there, because we know the square root of 1 is just 1. So that be ridiculous for us to do. Um, and I know that s, my s to the first, oh goodness, I'm just all destroying all the things. Okay. And we know that uh, the square root of s divided by the square root of s cubed would really be 1 over the square root of s squared. So I'll write that out for you. The square root of s divided by the square root of s cubed would really be the square root of s divided by s cubed, which would just be the square root of 1 over s squared. And we know that the square root of s squared would just be s. So if I were to simplify this down even further, I would get that that would be 8 divided by 2s, but I can simplify that and say it's 4 divided by s. So. Make sure you took all the fantastic notes, and if you have any questions, let us know. But otherwise, uh, thank you for watching, and have a fantastic day. Bye-bye now.